Also, every time I groom Joey, I have to be really careful because there will always be bird poop on his back. When I tell you my bladder <laughs> was about to burst, Hello everybody and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. Before we start, I just want to say a huge thank you to the title sponsor of the podcast, Red Post Equestrian. So Red Post is an equestrian store that sell all things for horse, for rider and also country. So um, they also sell all across the globe. So if you're in the US, if you're in Europe, if you're in Australia, they can ship to you. Um, they also have an app, so be sure to check that out for the best deals and also for easy checkout. Also, another little thing that I'd really recommend checking out is their Instagram because they have something called Win It Wednesday. So if you're one of those people that love a giveaway, be sure to check that out. But anyway, thank you so much, Red Post, for sponsoring the podcast and let's begin. So this week, I feel like we finally had some really nice weather in the UK. I feel like that's such a British thing, starting off talking about the weather. But this spring has been the worst spring ever. It's pretty much just rained the whole time. It has been awful. But this week, we finally had some sunshine, we finally had some good weather, and you know it's spring because we have all the swallows out at the moment, and I have actually quite a funny story about this. Um, so I think it was like one morning, it was really early in the morning, I was getting, um, you know, the horses their breakfast, that kind of thing. I turned on the light into Joey's stable, and I don't know if the bird was already there, or if me turning the light on gave it a little bit of a startle, but I turned on the light, and I was like, Joey looks a little bit taller than normal. And there was, um, yeah, a bird sitting on his head of all places. And I think Joey was like half asleep. He was doing, we call it, I don't know if anybody else calls it this, we are a very wood family. We call it blinky blinky when I turn the horse's lights on in the morning if it's still dark. So he was proper, properly doing like blinky blinky. His eyes were just like blinking. And he had this bird on his head and I was like, well, that is one way to start the day. Also, every time I groom Joey, I have to be really careful because there will always be bird poop on his back. So if, you know, I gave him a little like brush or that kind of thing with my hand rather than the grooming brush, I will literally get bird poo on my hand. So I have to be <laughs> very cautious about that. So yeah, Joey's been getting some extra baths and cleaning because of that. But um, you know what? He seems to enjoy the birds. I don't know if he enjoys the bird on his head, um, but their nest is literally directly above where he likes to stand in his stable. So there we go. That's something interesting that's happened this week. Um, also, something else that I've realised since... Because I did some, like, I was going to say pre-recorded podcasts. The last sort of two were about my um, growing up as with a non-equestrian family, so I actually filmed those quite a while ago. Since then, I have been ill not once, but twice. I have calculated I have been ill, I've had like a cold, five times this year. It's currently May, so if we do some mathematical calculations, if I'm ill, say like, for about a week, actually there was one cold, I think I was ill for three weeks, um, but I've calculated that for a quarter of this year, yes, 25% of this year so far, I have been ill, so um, I, I, my immune system really needs to, you know, have a little kick up of something or other. It needs like, it needs sorting, it needs help. Um, I don't know if it's because I've been working too much, I've had a very wild, crazy year, but you know what? It's all good. I'm fe I feel like I'm at the stage where I've probably had every single illness and virus under the sun at the moment, so hopefully I'm all good for the rest of the year, or at least for a while, because... Um, yeah, I've had, I feel like I'm a illness connoisseur now, like I've literally had all of them. I've had one where I'm just like snotty all the time. I've had one where I had like proper brain fog. I've had one where I've um, completely lost my voice and my throat was really hurting. Like, I didn't realise how different all the colds felt, but you know what? I'm all good now. I mean, I'm a little bit snotty, but I'm all good. That's sorry, that's a little bit TMI, but I'm all good now. Um, but yeah, I thought in today's episode I would talk a little bit about some of the hall shows that I've been to. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, the I don't know. I feel like a lot, a lot has happened at these hall shows. I was gonna say a lot of drama, not really drama. I don't know. We'll get into it. There's a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Um, so starting off a few weeks back. Oh my gosh, that literally feels like yesterday. I feel like I've done so much since then though as well. It's one of those things where, you know when time feels like, oh, that literally felt like the other day, but then you've done so much since then, so it also feels like that was ages ago at the same time. Anyway, 
The other day I went to badminton. Now it was actually my my third time ever at badminton and my first time since kind of doing YouTube. I don't know. I mean, I vlogged the first two times I went. One was in 2016 when I was like, what, 14, 15? And then the other was in 2018 when I was like 16, 17. Um, and both times I vlogged, the first time in 2016 was when I was really, you know, starting off YouTube. I think I just filmed everything on my phone. And then the second time was when YouTube was kind of starting to more become like a, a thing. I had like a proper camera. I think that was actually one of the first videos where my dad kind of helped me, if that makes sense. Like, we just bought like a proper mic, a proper camera, everything. And that was the first kind of time where we were kind of like working as a team rather than kind of just me doing everything myself. Apart from, you know, my parents would film me when I was riding because when you're on a horse, you can't really, you can't really film yourself. So, um, but no, that was that. I watched, I rewatched that vlog before I went and oh my goodness, can't believe how like shy and quiet I was. And I just looked very young and inexperienced. I don't know. I'm a lot more sort of natural in front of the camera now and chatty as you guys can probably tell, but um, no, that was different. And then, um, so I skipped a year when I did my GCSE exams in 2017 and I skipped a year in 2019 because I had my A-level exams. I literally had, I think I had an exam on one of the days it was on. So it would have just been a not very good idea to, you know, go, go away, have a weekend away when, you know, I've got an exam that day or the day after, so um, skip that day. And then obviously we had 2020 pandemic, 2021 didn't happen. Um, and I didn't go last year because I kind of, I don't know, I don't know how to say this. I don't wanna like upset anyone, but basically I wasn't allowed to go as press. They were just like, nah, we don't really want you. So I was like, okay. Um, I'll get onto it a little bit more later in the vlog because one of the other questions I got asked was like, I, cause I did film at badminton this year, but I wasn't allowed to film any horses. <laughs> so I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting one. So this year I went, um, cause I was very kindly invited by Fairfax and Favour cause it was their 10 year anniversary. Um, so that was really good fun. Um, met all the team like for the first time kind of thing in real life which was lovely um Megan Elphick was there and Lucy Robson from Footloose Eventing um they were there and I actually it's one of those things where I've done I've met definitely met Meg before but I don't think I'd met Lucy before but I felt like I had because I don't know if anybody else is like this when you watch somebody on you know social media you feel like you've already met them like there are so many people where I'm like I literally cannot remember if I met you like three years ago and it's been a while or if this is the first time I've met you because I just feel like I know them because I'm chatting to them on you know dms and that kind of thing um so that was really lovely I've got to say their stand there was gorgeous it was so nice like it literally had like chandeliers they had um guys making cocktails it was brilliant. I mean, it was beautiful. And then um, that day, I think we went, the days that we went were the, I was gonna say that, I, because dressage day is normally on the Friday, but because of the King's coronation, it was, the dressage day was also on the Saturday. So I was there the Saturday and the Sunday. So cross country day was the Sunday. And um, that's, that Saturday, I think the day before was really nice weather. Um, so everyone was wearing, you know, their summer gear, thinking that that day was gonna be summery as well. Oh no, it could not be further from the truth. So you could kind of see everybody at the beginning of the day, you know, there were quite a lot of people with like, you know, white trainers on, sandals, expecting it to be, you know, a lovely sunny day. I feel like badminton is either glorious hot sunny weather, you get badly sunburned if you don't have sun cream on and you are sweating buckets or it's absolutely chucking it down or it's absolutely freezing hailing. I feel like there was one year where it hailed. I think that maybe that was the year that I missed because I remember that was not, not really like a meme but it was kind of like a thing because everyone had that um, mustard yellow coat and somebody did like a video and it was like the crowd and like spotting all the people with the mustard yellow coat. Um, I think I probably did, I think I did have like that mustard yellow coat back in like 2017. Anyway, um, so yeah, beginning of the day, everyone thought it was gonna be lovely. And then the heavens opened. It was raining, cats and dogs. It was just pouring it down. It was not good. And it was so funny because if you watch back on the vlog, you can kind of see the beginning of the day, all the kind of pathways, a lovely luscious green grass. And then by the end of the day, 
It was just horrendous. It was mud. It felt like you were at a festival. Um, I've got to say, there were probably pigsties out there that are less muddy than the mud that was at badminton. It was not good. Um, luckily, I actually filmed, um, I think it was a TikTok that I put up, and that one, it really blew up. It's got like 1.2 million views. And it was literally just me walking in the mud being like, wear waterproof boots tomorrow if you're coming to badminton. Um, and the amount of people that were like, oh my goodness, you've got your Fairfax and Favour boots on, they're gonna be ruined. And I was like, no, 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 guys, don't worry. They are the um, waterproof explorers. So um, did a little other video showing me cleaning them and them looking beautiful and sparkling and new again. But a lot of people were very concerned about my boots. So do not worry. They are all good, they are fine. I did not make the mistake, but yeah, there were a lot of, I think there were a lot of white trainers out there that probably had their last day on this earth. Actually, no, to be fair, you could probably put them in the washing machine. Like the amount of shoes and things I've just chucked in the washing machine and they look as good as new is good. I think it's, somebody said put them, I mean, if you had really muddy um, trainers, probably not best to put them in like a new pillowcase, but if you have an old pillowcase, apparently if you put them in there, it damages them less when they're in the washing machine. Or you could, you know, just a bit of fairy liquid. That's what I normally do. Like if anything needs washing and I don't know what to wash it in, a bit of fairy liquid or baby shampoo, that works a treat. That's what I normally do anyway. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you're a trade stand, if you were selling wellies, or if you were selling coats or umbrellas, then you probably would have had quite a good, you know, show. But if you were selling anything else, oh no, I felt, I really felt for the stands that um, had carpet down. Um, I think it was the um, Emily Cole stand. She did like a little photo on her Insta and it was like, just because it was kind of like, that her tent that she was in was inside. She had like, she even brought like a really pretty rug and it was just, it was trashed. It was not good. It was, yeah. Even, even my coat got muddy and I don't even know how that happened. Like the mud must have just splattered up somehow. Um, there were a few people, oh my goodness, I really felt for them where they obviously, cause there were little ramps to get into some of the trade stands where they obviously slipped and just went flat on their face in the mud and you could tell who had fallen over cause they just had mud all over their legs, all over their top, just everywhere. So I really felt for those people. I did a little meet and greet as well and it was a little bit slippy for some people like coming up to um, the horse and rider and pony stand. And I was literally like, the amount of people, I was like, look, just take my hand, I'll like help you up. Please don't fall over, please don't sit. Luckily, nobody, I don't think, I don't think anybody at my meet and greet slipped over, but it was really lovely seeing you all. Um, also, I thought I would, you know, talk a little bit more about, I think this is something that I get asked quite a lot from people who, um, it's not like generally people, I feel like it's more people that I work with in the horse world, like, that's one of the things I love most about going to the shows, it's going and catching up with all the people that I, like, email daily and actually seeing them in real life, having a bit of catch up, having a bit of a chat, like, literally, I think the whole of, like, dressage day, I was literally just going around and chatting to all the people that I know and work with, which was really lovely, but a question I get asked most by people, generally, just, not, like, in Q&As or stuff like that, but just, like, you know, people that I meet and chat to is like, what is it like going to a horse show? Kind of, I don't want to say famous because I don't really want to say, I don't know, that feels weird. Like I'm not like, you know, Selena Gomez, but <laughs> um, being kind of like well known in the equestrian world. And the best way I can describe it is for me, it's kind of like Hannah Montana. If any of you guys watched that when you were growing up, like I did, because I kind of have like the best of both worlds. When I'm at a horse show, you know, I meet loads of people, it's really lovely. It's kind of like, the best way I can describe it is it's like meeting a friend you didn't know you knew you had kind of thing. The first time I met someone who watched my videos, I think the best way I can describe it is, you know when you meet up with like your mum's cousin that you've never met before or some family member that know everything about you because obviously they know your parents. They've seen, you know, your parents' Facebook photos and that kind of stuff. Um, and they know everything about you, but you're just like, girl, I have never met you in my life. I mean, I might have met you when I was two and I do not recall who you are, what your name is kind of thing. Um, but then you like get along really well and you're like, oh, this is great kind of thing. So that's how I describe it. Or just like, you know, bumping into a friend and being like, oh, hey. And yeah, no, it's really cute. Like everyone I've ever met has always been so lovely and kind. And yeah, that's the best I can describe it. It's like meeting a friend you never knew you had. Um, but also I found at badminton, it was actually like, I don't want to say good because I love meeting you all, but it was weird in the sense that I didn't get recognized as much as I thought because I was, because it was pelting it down with rain, it was muddy. And I think if you were walking somewhere, 
everyone kind of like had their head down it was just like it was like a mission getting through that mud people were going from one stand to the other like they were going for it they weren't you know kind of walking around at a leisurely play pace chatting enjoying the sunshine that wasn't happening also I had like a massive umbrella so I was kind of like hidden underneath that and also I had to like tip the umbrella a little bit so the rain wasn't going in my face so um I didn't actually get recognized as much as I thought that was like not one thing that I was like concerned about but it's like the worst thing that I would want would be for there to just be chaos that's not a good environment to be in and there have definitely been meet and greets and things I've done in the past where I feel like every time I do a meet and greet with somebody new, they never take us seriously in the sense where we're like, there needs to be an orderly queue, there needs to be some sort of security. Like, And they're always like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. And then it's always like, oh wow, a lot more people turned up, you were right. So um, I was a little, that was actually like, yeah, I think this was actually the first year I've ever done a meet and greet at badminton. It was obviously with Pony and Horse and Rider. So they very kindly organised all of that and made sure it was the best it possibly could be. Um, but yeah, uh, actually, I think the first kind of time I ever really got recognised... No, the first time I got recognised was at the London International Horse Show back in, I want to say, 2016 no 2017 I think it must have been 20 yeah 2017 and I had two people that came and said hi which was really lovely but then badminton I think my channel really grew from in that kind of like almost six months from like Christmas to badminton um so yeah badminton 2018 the year that I went that was actually the first year where I kind of like was walking around and people were recognizing me I think I walked it was when I first walked into the Lemure stand of course classic as me um in 2018 and there were these girls giggling and I, I was like, I was with my dad and I was like, um, because they were kind of like kept looking at me and giggling and then kept looking at me. My dad was like, I think they recognise you. Do you want to go and say hi? And I feel like that's one of the weirdest things because what if they like were just had an inside joke and were just laughing? Like I never want to go up to someone and be like, oh, hey, do you watch my videos? Because I feel like that's a really weird thing to do. Um, and also if like, I don't know, someone catches my eye or stares at me, I'd I don't, I don't know, if it's like a random stranger, like I'll probably, like, I, like, I try my best to like smile back, but I never kind of want to be like wave and be like, yeah, you know who I am. You're like, it, does that make sense? I don't know. So I've never, I never like, if you see me and you want to come up and say hi, that's totally fine. But I, I'm very shy and I probably won't come up and say hello to you, if that makes sense. Because I, I don't know, I just don't want to be that person that's like, oh, hey, do you watch my videos? And then them being like, no, who are you? <laughs> like, who do you think you are kind of thing? Um... But yeah, I try my best. Also, I am, my, I, I am like, I think I have some hearing problems. I really need to go to, I was going to say, an, an optician's is for your eyes. What's a, a, an ear doctor? I think it's, I don't think my hearing's that bad. Like, I can hear things, but I can't make out what the things are. Like, the amount of times, like, my boyfriend said something to me and I'm like, pardon? <laughs> or, like, my parents have said something to me. And I just, I think, I don't know if it's, like, my dyslexia and I just take a little while to process what somebody said or if gen generally I just struggle with like hear like distinguishing what people are saying um I also I, I feel like this is another thing when I'm reading something I am in my own little world I will be reading that thing and I will hear like my my hearing just turns off all I am focusing on like I am hyper hyper focused like if I'm on Instagram I'm reading a caption that is all I'm focusing on. So if somebody, like, for example, my mum starts talking to me, unless you start the sentence with Esme and look me in the eyes, I will not realise that she's talking to me or I won't even realise, I won't even hear that she's talking to me. Like, my parents are like, oh, you have, like, selective hearing, like, you're so rude. I'm like, no, I promise I'm not rude. I just generally don't hear people if I'm concentrating on something. So um, if you, like, shout my name or something like that at a whole show, I really do apologise if I did not hear you or have not heard you because like I'm bad enough at, as it is like with my family I feel like Esme also is a name that can sound like a lot of things because it's got like an e at the end so it could be Millie it could be um Ellie it could be I don't know does that make sense or just like I feel like a lot of words have like an e kind of noise although when I was when I was learning Spanish at school um that, like because there's like one bit where it's like it's two different words but it would be like es me and then like whenever my Spanish teacher would say that I'd be like yes but, <laughs> but apart from that <laughs> that's, like, that's such a little random thing for me to say but apart from that I feel like I'm just really bad like unless 
we have eye contact locked and you say my name, I'm just really bad at hearing people. I'm, I apologise. I, I, th I think I will go and get my hearing tested at some stage because it's not good. The amount of times I've had to say pardon to something, especially if there's background noise. Like if there's any background music, like if I'm, you know, at, on a night out, I will not be able to hear what you say at all. Um, even like lip reading, I feel like I'm not very good at that either. Like if someone's like whispering something or like lip, I'm just like, I'm like, what? Pardon? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Okay, back to talking about what it's like to be sort of recognised. So like the other sort of half of it, going back to Hannah Montana, was um, in the real world, I say the real world, basically if I'm in a scenario that's not horsey, um, I don't actually get recognised that much. I mean, I do, I probably do get recognised and people are just polite and don't, or like shy like me. Like I've seen celebrities in the wild and I've always been too shy to go up and say, hey, or like, can I get a photo? But I feel like I probably, I'm also very oblivious. Like I am, as I said before, I am normally like in my own little dream world. I'm very good at just kind of zoning out, thinking about things. I would generally be just be thinking about the horses, video ideas, that kind of stuff work. Um, so I'm very good at just zoning out and thinking about things. But also I'm very like oblivious. It's always, it's always my friends and family that spot someone who's recognized me before I kind of realize. So I probably have just been walking around, you know, walking around town, that kind of thing. And somebody's recognized me and I just have not had a clue. I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but there we go. Actually, I feel like airports is actually generally where I get recognized most. And I feel like in the wild, I get recognized mostly by my older audience um because this is how I kind of describe it because I know from like all of my analytics and data that my main audience is 18 to 25 which often really shocks people they're like whoa that's like a lot older than I was expecting but actually like I know that that's probably true from like for example my merch sales I know what size hoodies and that kind of thing people are buying but also I know from just meeting people out in the wild so for example when I was at an airport I met like a whole Hindu even when I was on the beach once riding the horses there were these two mums that had like I say like proper like baby babies they weren't like they were it was like during school time um they might have had older kids that watched me but they looked very young so I assume they they're a horsey and watch my videos as well so I do have a lot of people I feel like especially as like I've kind of grown up on YouTube. My audience is kind of growing up with me, which is really lovely. Um, and then there are people that are literally in their twenties like me that have been watching me since I was a, a young teenager. I don't know what that accent was. <laughs> that was, I'm, I'm the worst at accents. Never ask me to do an accent because I feel like my boyfriend always makes fun of me when I try to do an accent. Cause he says, you literally just sound like you but doing a weird voice. You don't sound like someone else. Like I just have undertones of my my normal voice in any accent that I do. Um, so yeah, I could not be an actor. Actually, the only one that I can kind of do is an American accent because you just kind of really strain your voice and that's the best way to describe it. Um, and you, I kind of don't sound like me when I do that, but any other accent, cannot do. Do not ask me to do an accent, please, because I will butcher it highly um but yeah I've met um actually the weird not the weirdest I've had I've had lots of different like different experiences at meet and greets and things um I actually met someone or someone recognized me when I was flying back from Paris Fashion Week I was literally at the airport and um they said oh do you mind if I sit there and I said oh I'm really sorry my dad's literally just coming back from grabbing some food like he's gonna be sitting here any second now I'm really sorry and then she just kind of looked at me I was like you're Esme and I was like yeah and she was like oh my gosh I'm so sorry lovely to meet you and then kind of like rushed off and I was like oh there we go met someone as well um but yeah I feel like it's definitely my older audience that I meet in real life and my younger audience is more the ones that come to meet and greets because I'd say if you're 13 you'll probably wait an hour or two to meet me but if you're 23 I don't know if you would want to wait that long to meet me does that make sense I don't know um, I also find when I do meet in, I don't know, I meet more older people like around the shopping area, that kind of thing. And then I meet more of my younger audience at the meet and greets. So there we go. Um, what else something else that I was going to say? Oh yeah, I was going to talk about some of, not the, I was going to say my worst meet and greet experiences because I've never had a bad one. There have just been times where I felt like I was bad. Does that make sense? I don't know. Like there was, um, I think it was at Burley. I, it was like back when I was like starting, 
it's kind of like new to meeting meeting people on YouTube, that kind of thing. And I really needed a wee. When I tell you my bladder <laughs> was about to burst, I was running to the media center so I could go and use the toilets. And um, I met this big group of girls and I said like hi to them. We all got a photo, that kind of thing. And normally like I stand and chat for a little bit longer. But when I tell you, I was like, I'm really sorry. I got to be somewhere. And I ran to those toilets, got there in time. Luckily, I did not wee myself. That would not have been good. <laughs> but that it was a close call. I was, yeah, it was not good. Um, and then like, I feel like it's di it's easier now because I don't know, I feel like sometimes if I have to be somewhere, the, the main crucial time thing is if I have to be somewhere to interview a rider or be somewhere to do a course walk or that kind of thing, like that, that is like a limited time because the riders are, I'm like, thank you so much for giving up your time on competition day. I know you're about to go in the ring in like a few minutes time and you're probably like stressing, but thank you so much for your time, like that kind of thing because they are busy. And also the other thing is um, course walks because the riders kind of go around first and then the media can go in and we only really have like five minutes to do it. So it's like a proper rush and I have to get there like on time so that's the only times like I've always I, I think there's only literally only been one time I think I've said no to a photo and that's because I was doing a course walk had to go and get to my meet and greet because I didn't want to be late for that and the person said um I was I think it was at London International Horse Show and I was trying to way weave through all these people to get to my meet and greet on time and someone said oh it's me can I like get a photo and I said I didn't even say no, I just said, I've got a meet and greet that I'm heading over to now. If you want, you can come over and we can get a photo there because I've really got to get there now because um, like I've got security with me and they weren't allow allowing me to like stop and chat to people. Like It was like a mission I needed to get there and I felt so awful and they wrote something horrible online being like, Esme didn't get a photo with me and that kind of thing. I was like, I literally said I would love to, but I've got to get to my meet and greet and I can do it there in a safe environment rather than like in the middle of like this big crowd. Cause I think it was the like time where um, the evening performance people were arrived and the afternoon performance had just ended. So that sort of time, it is just a big crush of people and it's very busy. So um, yeah. I'd say, yeah, I, I still feel really guilty about that, but it's one of those things where it's just like, I try my very best, but it's, yeah, it's one of those things. But anyway, um, what else was I talking about? Um, airports. Airports. What about the guy in security that wants to take Oh, the yeah. Place? Back to airports. This is this other thing that I wanted to say, because this was the most, like, wholesome experience of, I've had with like meeting people. Um, we'll end it on a positive. So um, actually, I feel like I meet a lot of parents because when I meet people in real life. And um, I was going on holiday with my boyfriend and his friends. And um, we were actually going to go and see the Italian Grand Prix in Monza. So any F1 fans. Hello, hello. <laughs> I feel like my every family has like one sport that the whole family just kind of watches. So like some families are rugby families, some are football families, some are, I'm trying to think of other things like golfing families. Do people sit around and watch golf? There's like often like a sport. So I come from a Formula One family, a very sort of car kind of family. So like my grandparents all watch it, my brother loves it, my dad, me, even my boy my boyfriend loves Formula One as well. So that was something nice that we've got in common. So um that was like one of the first things we came up, met my family, we all just sat down and watched the Formula One together. Um so yeah we went to Monza and um that was it was not the not I was gonna say not the best time. It was like it was a really fun trip and we had lots of laughs and um I actually, I, at first I was like, is it going to be alright that I'm going to be like the only girl on a lad's holiday? Because I, um, I wasn't actually supposed to be the one that was going. It was another guy's girlfriend and then they broke up and then they had extra tickets and flight seats. And they were like, you like Farm Formula One, do you want to come along? I was like, alrighty then. Um, but no, it was like good fun, but it was just so busy. And the way it was organised wasn't the best in the sense that they had these, we had to get these weird like tokens in order to buy food. So they had to queue up for like an hour for tokens, then queue up an hour for food. And I think they, there was like 30,000 people there. Like it was, I think they probably sold like too many tickets. I don't know, but. 300,000. Three, yeah, sorry. And there were like 300,000 people there. So um, I don't know if they oversold tickets or not like, they could say like there's like a little woody bit in the middle so there was enough for people to walk around there but we literally had to actually on the one of the first days we were lucky in the sense that we managed to find 
Um, Because we were there with general admission, so we managed to find a general admission seating area on the first day. I was going to say the first day. The first day we couldn't actually go because all the trains were cancelled and that was our only way of getting there because they had train strikes. So, you know, the day before the actual like race or Grand Prix, we were there and um, we managed to get all right seats for that. But the actual day of the race, oh my goodness, we had to basically stand behind five different five rows of people to be able to see so and it was boiling it was proper sweaty dehydrated they ran out of I think they ran out of water at one point as well and we literally had to I think we bought water off somebody who had bought water with their tokens and it was like we paid something ridiculous it was like 10 euros for a bottle of water or something because we're all so dehydrated and such like a limited supply it felt almost like lord of the flies kind of thing we were just like trying to survive um because you can obviously only take so much in in your rucksack. And there were, what, five, six of us all together? So there was quite a lot of us as well. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> that was, I mean, it was a really fun trip. And because of the trains being cancelled, we literally had to, there were, actually, we managed to get a train, but the train station was just absolutely packed. Like we had to, it, we were literally on the train platform. And there were like three trains that went before there was enough room for us to get on the train as well. Um, and there was one day we were just like, sack off the train. We will walk. And we honestly walked about one. It took us about an hour and a half, two hours. And that was there and back. And we walked both times. Um, so yeah, that was that was a long old, long old day. I definitely got my steps in then, but it was really good fun. I've been to the Texas Grand Prix as well, and that was a lot better because we had seats on turn one, so we could like literally see the whole track and see everything, which is really good fun. But that was that was quite a while ago. That was back in 2019. That was my brother's kind of like sweet 16 present that we all got him because I was going to Texas anyway to film Western riding, which is really good fun. I'd love to get back to the US sometime too. Um, so my brother was like, oh, I'll come along. And then we're like, surprise, we got you F1 tickets. Um, but yeah, back to, oh yeah, anyway, back to me being at an airport um, with all the guys. And um, the security guy was like, oh, like come around this way. And we just thought, oh, he's being nice. Like we get, um, he like opened up, I think, I don't know. We basically got like the shorter kind of queue. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And then he was like, I'm not really allowed to, you know, do this but do you mind if we get a selfie because my daughter loves watching your videos I was like yeah sure and, I'll, and all of the I think this maybe was the first time that I was with my boyfriend and somebody like recognized me or definitely with all the guys and they were like cool there we go that was that was different but no he was honestly so sweet we had a little chat as well um but no I always find it so like wholesome and lovely meeting you guys or your guys' parents or family members or even like grandmas, the amount of grandmas that have come to meet and greets being like, oh, it's me, like I love watching your videos. Or like the amount of mums that also come and get photos with me as well. So if you're a mum and you want to get a photo with me, you're more than welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what it's like meeting people, I guess. Back to the horse show. So while I was there, I kind of just did like a, my badminton experience. I only filmed on the first day as well. I had a little hiccup then. Not really a hiccup. It was kind of like a, you know, when your like tummy just makes like a weird noise and some air comes up. I don't know. It was a weird kind of thing. Um, don't know if you heard that. Um, but yeah, back to what it was like at badminton. Um, so on the first day, I kind of just did like a little, you know, I did a little vlog. I was like, you know what? While I'm here, make a little vlog, show off what I'm doing. You know, with Fairfax and Favor, that was a really good fun. Um, I actually had lunch with Fairfax and Favor in like the. I was gonna say the posh bit. It was the posh bit, like the nice bit where you could, we were, I don't know, never been there before, but it was very lovely. We had like a proper meal and everything and they had some of the other sort of Fairfax and Favour content creators, influencer kind of people there. And um, guess who else was there, which I, I was not fangirled. I'm very good at just like, you know, I'm like, you're a person. Like, it was like, kind of like, this is how I kind of said to myself when I met, Pippa Funnel, because she's kind of a similar age to one of my instructors, I was like, oh, it's just like, you know, like, meeting a pony club instructor, that kind of thing, and she's just a person, like, I'm just a person. I think I've, I'm more, less, more, more chilled with meeting people since doing what my job is, because I know a lot of people come up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, you're Esme, I'm like, yep, I'll, I'm Esme, like, I'm just a horse girl. But, um, <laughs> so anyway, um, who was around the table? some of you might know um if, especially if you've watched Clarkson's Farm um Caleb was there and he was there with um I don't know if it's his wife or his girlfriend but his significant other 
woman and sorry that's a really horrible way to put it but they were both I don't I, 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 I apologize <laughs> but anyway um they were both there and they were really lovely and um I, I obviously you know that was the one time where I was like all right I'll get a photo because some of the other people around the table was like, can I get a photo? I was like, my family will watch Clarkson's Farm. I was like, they will be upset if I don't get a photo. So we got a photo. He was really lovely. Like we sat around, just had lunch together, all the Fairfax and Favour kind of crew. And um, no, he was literally just how you would, ex literally the same as what he is on TV, which you would probably expect. But yeah, that was that was good fun. We had some laughs. Um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, so... Now we're kind of on to the bit like why I wasn't allowed to film any of the horses at a horse show. Um, so this is kind of the reason why I didn't go last year was because um, I wasn't allowed to go as media or press or allowed in the media centre, which I kind of like to use the media centre as a place where I can literally just go. They have Wi-Fi so I can upload all my stories and my social media content because that's normally kind of like the reason why I go to horse shows because it's my job. Um, but also it's kind of like a nice place where I can just, you know, have a sit down, have a glass of water, have a bit of a chill. Um, especially as it's quite a busy day, I'm always up around on my feet. Um, that's one thing that my physio keeps telling me off for. Like I'm, She was like, Esme, you cannot do meet and greets longer than two hours because I have quite a bad back and um a lot of the time I'm like up and then I'm down like signing things and then I'm up and then I'm down so one of the things that I also get asked most when I do sort of meet and greets everyone or signings everyone's always like oh your hand must be aching by the end of this and you think tell you what my hand never really aches like I feel like I do quite a lot of writing like if it's you know on my iPad doing some like planning work type in that kind of thing but do you know what really hurts? It's my jaw. I think I have like jaw problems or some sort of issue with my jaw. I mean, my dentist did tell me off for like grinding my teeth in my sleep. Um, I feel like that's probably like a stress kind of thing. But um, my jaw is really bad. And I think it's from like, even like just in my job in general, like if we're on like a shoot day, if I'm smiling loads in photos, my jaw just aches so much. And um by the but literally by the end of it like I will be in like severe pain in my jaw like it's the weirdest thing like you wouldn't expect so my physio is like Esme you cannot do meet and greets longer than two hours or I'll be really cross and every time she does my back um she also does my jaw and gives me like a proper jaw massage and I get loads of like knots in my jaw and neck and I don't know I don't know if you have knots there but she she does something and it really really hurts and it releases a lot of pressure so um yeah my jaw has not been great recently I have been in quite a bit of pain actually with that I mean I've got quite a high pain tolerance in the sense that when I broke my rib my dad at first didn't believe that I'd broken a rib because he was like you'll be in excruciating pain I was like oh I am I feel like I'm being shot every time I get out of bed and then he felt my rib as a medical professional he was like oh yeah there's a good old lump there where I can feel the crack you've definitely broken it <laughs> you've just you know been a right old trooper just carrying on I was like yep yeah, I just you know I've got things to do can't let that slow me down I'm definitely one of those people where even though I have been ill quite a lot recently I've just been like nope gotta carry on gotta keep on going um but yeah back to like filming and things so apparently, and this goes for all photographers at Babington, I'm pretty sure, the rules are you're allowed to take photos, but you're not allowed to film any video content if you are like a professional media person. And that's because they are worried that people will watch videos on social media instead of buying the like live stream so you can watch it live. Now, you might be thinking, Esme, how come, you know, that's the thing there? Like, how how are you allowed to film at other horse shows? Now, other horse shows have a rule where you're not allowed to show a whole round. So I wouldn't be able to, you know, film, let's say, Joe Stockdale's round at a show. I wouldn't be allowed to film the whole thing and post it on social media, or I wouldn't just be allowed to film the whole thing in general. Um, but you're allowed to normally film, like, I think they're trying to get some proper rules in place um because don't hold me to this but normally it's like I'd say if it's under 30 seconds that's normally like all right or if you I think that for jumping they're going to try and put something in place where it's like for the amount of fences and I'm talking about other shows obviously badminton they're their own thing they have their own rules um so that would be really interesting to see that kind of happen I feel like a lot of people will probably be like Esme this is kind of boring like why are you talking about this but for me as someone who you know, as a content creator and is in the me horse media industry, this is like 
you know, this is, this is going on. This is like the hot topic at the moment. And um, so I wasn't allowed to film any of the sort of, like basically anything that was horse sport. So wasn't allowed to film any of the dressage, wasn't allowed to film any of the cross country. And that included me posting like, you know, an Instagram story snap of, or like, no, I was allowed to do a photo. So I could have done like a photo of a horse going over a jump, but I wasn't allowed to film like basically any videos of anything. Um, when my, me and my tat first heard, heard about this, we were like, what are we gonna do? Like, we're not gonna be able to like film a vlog because that's like, you know, the main spectacle. And I'm sure you guys aren't gonna be like, oh, I've watched Esme, Esme's vlog now. I'm not gonna go to badminton, I've seen it now. Like, or I've seen the competition because I don't say what the scores are. Well, I mean, I'd maybe say who won at the end. But then, yeah, they told me off my 2018 vlog, which little 16-year-old Esme made. So um, apparently I wasn't allowed to film then either, but I was, you know, barely starting off. And the thing is, there are gonna be, there is, you can't, like they had a similar thing with the Olympics as well with like filming. But the thing is, it's, we're living in a modern day where literally almost, every single person that has a phone has a smartphone which has a camera on that they can take videos on and if you go on you know other like social media platforms like instagram tiktok even facebook there'll be loads of just the general public filming clips of you know the competition and that kind of thing and i guess i don't know it's tricky it is what it is so that is why like i had so many people in the comments being like it's a lovely vlog, Esme, but like, where are the horses? Like, you're at a horse show, and the only horse I filmed was the World Horse Welfare one right at the beginning. So, um, if you're wondering, that is why. Um, I don't know if they'll ever change their rules or not, but that is just their rules at the moment. Obviously, um, I want to be respectful, and I don't want to upset anybody. You know, that is not my thing. I'm not about the drama. I'm not here. When we and my dad first found out about that, we actually had a bit of a laugh. We were trying to think of ways that we could get around it. So this is like the like most stupid kind of thing. And I feel like it would actually be quite funny. If anybody nicks this idea now I've said it, I'm claiming this is my idea first. So we're like, how about we just take still photos of all the cross country fences, get a still photo of like a horse with a rider on it, in like cross country gear kind of thing, just like a famous horse and rider, put it on a lollipop stick and like print it out and then just like pretend that the horse is jumping over all the fences. Um, I don't know if that would be allowed, but there we go. Um, also, I've, my heart really goes out to Felicity, my instructor, because she was at badminton and she was doing so well. Like honestly, her and her horse Mickey, they were flying around the course. I think she was like four away from home or four away from the last one. And um, she had a really, well, I was gonna say a horrible fall. She, she and Mickey are both completely fine, all good, like barely a scratch or a bruise kind of thing. And um, what happened was I think he got confused. I don't know if it was the lighting or the way the fence was. Um, and I think a few other horses had this issue as well where I think he thought it was like a bounce jump or something like that. He basically just couldn't see where the fence was. And I think he took off too late and they just like ended up in the ditch. They're both completely fine. And like Felicity was saying to me, she sees it as she went clear round. Like she went clear round last year because like Mickey was so fit. He was easily jumping all of the fences. Like they were a really good combination together. And there was some combinations, I you know, don't want to be in the drama or talk about anything, you know, controversial, but because that is just not me. I'm not here for that. I am in my own little happy YouTube place where I talk about ponies and happy things. But um, there were definitely some horse and rider combinations where we were watching more like, please just pull up. Please just put your hand up. Please just, you know, retire like your horse. You're not going to win. Your horse is a little bit on the tired side when I know Felicity is so conscious about making sure that Mickey is fit for badminton. Like twice a week, like every week, she is up on the hills, which is what I'm going to be doing with Joey because I need to get Joey fit. Um, Joey is definitely not fit enough to go around a cross country course at the moment because um, he's had time off with his injury. But she is always out there galloping Mickey and he is super fit. He honestly was jumping those fences with air to spare. He was going for it. He looked incredible. So it's such a shame. Like she honestly said it was like literally just bad luck. It was one of those things where it's like, 
if that hadn't have happened, she probably she would have definitely have gone round clear with the way he was going. They were, you know, on the time. They were going really well, and I think she did really well last year. Like she went. I'm pretty sure she went double clear last year and was in like I think top twenty. I want to say, but anyway, one of those things. I feel really bad for her, but they're both fine, and that's the main thing that matters. And there's always next year, or there are always other competitions and that kind of thing. But yeah, but there we go. I actually had like a, I had a really. It was a weird time, like. It was, I actually, I think I really enjoyed badminton just because I met up with so many people, was like chatty with them and just like, it was like a big old catch up. I don't know how to describe it. I feel like horse shows, and I'm only thinking of this because we've like Coachella's just happened, but I feel like horse shows are like the Coachella of the equestrian world. Like everyone picks out their outfit before, everyone gets really excited, everyone meets up. Um, where there was also this like um, champagne sort of cocktail fancy evening in the evening with Fairfax and Favour to celebrate their 10 year anniversary. And last minute, I got asked to be on a panel slash competition quiz thing. Um, so one side was like the Fairfax and Favour team. So like um, Marcus, the main guy and um, some of the staff and the head people. And then on the other side was me, Meg and Lucy. And um, all the questions were on Fairfax and Favour's history, um, the like coronation or like the royal family kind of thing. And then the last one was on eventing. Now, um, I I don't work for Fair, I mean, I, I kind of do like now I'm a content creator for them, but you know, I haven't been working for Fairfax and Favour for the last, you know, I'm not like in their marketing team. Like one of the, some of the, basically some of the, kind of, well, I kind of am, but anyway, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, I'm a content creator for them. I obviously love the brand. I've been using their products for number of, number of years now, three years now, I want to say. Um, but I don't know, for example, some of the questions which were like, how many Regina's, Regina boots did they sell in 2022? Or like stuff like that. Like, how am I supposed to know that? Um, so I felt like that was definitely swayed towards their end kind of thing. And then um, Coronation, uh, I mean, I, I don't know that much about the coronation or that kind of stuff. Um, and then the third one was eventing. And it's like, I'm more of a show jumper. Like, work-wise, normally if I'm covering shows, especially if I'm doing stuff for the FBI and I'm covering shows, it's normally always show jumping. So I feel like I definitely know show jumping a bit more than eventing. Like, I don't go to that many events. I'm definitely more of a show jumping gal. I, yeah. In my heart, I am a show jumper. That's normally what I tell people when it comes to... Like, that's what I used to compete in for my pony club back in the day on Casper. I mean, I don't really compete anymore, but... Um, anyway, eventing questions, not so good. I mean, there were a lot of, like, badminton questions. So I was like, Meg, Lucy, those ones are for you. I am just going to be here. I am absolutely terrible at anything general knowledge at all. Like, don't take me to a pub quiz. I, like, I'm... I'd say I'm an... I'm an intelligent person. I don't know if that sounds like I'm bigging myself up. Like, I'm not stupid. I did, like, sciences at A-level and that kind of thing. And I did all right in my exams. Like, I'd say, like, I'm, you know... But I'm also dyslexic. But I feel like that's not going to hinder me in a quiz. But I just am really bad at anything general knowledge. Anything general... Yeah, I'd say I'm, I'm weirdly academic but I'm not, that's what I mean by intelligent. I don't want people thinking that I've just gone like, oh yeah, I'm so much better than all of you. I am really clever. That's, yeah, that's not me. I'm just meaning, I'm slightly academic, but also, oh, I just heard my jaw click then. I don't know if you heard that. Cool, it almost popped out. Um, <laughs> that would not be good. Um, but yeah, I'm just rubbish at anything general knowledge. My group chat with the girls used to be called Education of Celebs. For Esme, because that's kind of how it started, because they were like, girl, we need to educate you on celebrities, because, like, I just, I just don't, gem like, I'm like, oh, it's that person from that movie that's that character, they're like, yes, yes, that's this person, and I'm just like, did hadn't heard, I mean, I've heard of their name, but I couldn't put a face to a name, I'm really bad at names, I can do faces, but names, not at all, um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm rubbish at anything general knowledge. I just feel like I don't know that many things. I mean, I know things, but just really useful things that aren't going to come up on a pub quiz. Um, so yeah, I, I, our team lost, unfortunately. I felt like it was kind of swayed in the Fairfax and Favour team because there were questions that we definitely would not have known. And I think they did some research before. They were like researching all the Bampton questions and I only knew I was on the team like an hour before. So I couldn't be like, oh, better, you know, check up 
the coronation and see like some facts about it, that kind of thing. But it was good fun. We had a lovely evening. It was lovely seeing everyone. Cross country day was nice as well in the sense that um, um, I didn't actually, I, like work wise, I kind of did everything that I really needed to do the day before. So I could kind of chill a little bit more on cross country day. I mean, I had my meet up that day, which was really nice. Really lovely meeting you all. Um, but I went to the Voltaire design um, kind of tent near the lake. So kind of chilled out there for a bit, met some friends and people there too um and watch the sort of cross country a little bit from the lake but that was pretty much my horse show experience that weekend um hope you'll have a lovely weekend this weekend a little sneak peek of what i'm going up to i'm actually um tomorrow morning 4am leaving another 4am start i feel like 4am is my new like i was gonna say bedtime morning wake up time um, because I'm going to Cornwall with my boyfriend. He's done a little surprise trip for me. Didn't know I was going until a few days ago. Um, so yeah, in my next podcast, I might be talking about that. So, you know, hopefully I have a good time. I I'm sure I will. But um, yeah, hopefully no drama or anything bad happens on my trip. But yeah, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I feel like I've definitely rambled on for way too long once again. I feel like I'm very good at going, oh my gosh, my jaw keeps clicking. I need to stop talking. I need to have a little, give it a rest. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Thank you again to Red Post Question for sponsoring the podcast. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.